Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to Mindset Movement. Here we are live with Miss Tina Martini that we're going to bring on in just a second. Uh, today we're going to um, make some Spanish quinoa. So quinoa is a, a wonderful um, food. Actually, quinoa has so many benefits. So as you saw from the list that Tina Martini gave us, it's actually um, got a lot of vitamin B6. Uh, it's excellent for the immune system. It calms down the sugar cravings, okay? It's good for the muscle mass. So for you guys who go to do sport, lots of people doing sport at home at the moment, this is excellent for your muscle mass. Uh, it gives us 58% of manganese requirements, okay, which is very important for the body. And it's a good cancer killer because it actually reduces uh, tumors and with cam camphorol. So I'm not sure I pronounced that right, but there is so many good nutrients in quinoa. So I discovered it just this year. I never ate it before. And here we're going to make this with Tina and you're going to have lots of delicious yum yum ingredients uh, together with this. If you want the ingredients, it's, uh, it's in the comments, okay? Let's bring on our star just after this. Let's put that on again, didn't hear it. Hi, Tina, how are you? Well, good morning from San Diego, Sass. How are you? Good. Hi, everybody. Good. Wonderful. Good. <laughs> well, the weather is beautiful here. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's a little brisk, but man, it is just a gorgeous day. And self-care Saturday, let's cook up some great food for self-care. What's written here? What? Show oh. us what's written on your... On your Hey, so you've got your own apron, the Tina Martini Medicine Chef and Delicious Medicine. Wonderful. That's right. So, you know, that's what I'm all about, Sass. But I'm also about having fun and being efficient in the kitchen. So I hope that the things that I share make your life easier in the kitchen and actually help inspire you to get in and prepare your own food. And now yes. that we're kind of on our little isolation trip here, we uh, I, I find that people are actually doing a lot of cooking. And I see on your Insta stories and I see on your feeds that you are getting in the kitchen. So nothing makes me happier. I'm sorry Wonderful. that, it, you know, took this kind of drastic thing to bring us all to the realization that being in the kitchen is a really great place to be. Uh, you know, I, I just think that there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this sass. Yeah. And so I'm just holding my focus on that. I mean, I'm as frustrated as everybody. I'm ready to go back to work. I'm sure we're all ready to go back to work, but, uh, you know, just try to stay in present time and just yeah. try to enjoy your family and your pets and, you know, go out in your backyard and enjoy some sunshine if it's sunny where you are. So you were right about quinoa. It is a magical, magical food. Now, you guys out there, my food and fitness lovers, if you catch me calling quinoa a grain, you correct me. <laughs> it is not a grain. It is a, not a grain. So um, quinoa being a seed, it's kind of like a little bird seed. Uh, let, me, let me get some. This is the raw quinoa here. And uh, so you can see that it actually does look like a little bird seed. And what happens when we cook it is it opens up and a little, little tail comes out. And so that's how we know the quinoa is done. Now, the first thing I'm going to do today, chefs, is I'm going to toast the quinoa. Now, a lot of people say toast it. What do you mean? Well, what I'm going to do, let's kick on some fire here and get it hot in the ageless kitchen. What I'm going to do is toast it just a little bit, and you'll start to smell the nice aroma. And that just deepens the flavor and adds an extra layer of flavor. So I'm just gonna put the quinoa in a dry pan. And when we're toasting things like nuts, grains, seeds, you know, all of that kind of thing, 
we generally want to use a dry pan to do that. And if you find that it's too toasty or the flavor is kind of overpowering, here's what I do. I just toast half of what the recipe calls for. Okay. So it gives a very subtle, rich, deep flavor without just, you know, total toast on your palate. So if you want to just toast half of the grain and you can do this with rice, another thing that I toast is polenta cornmeal. Really? If you're making polenta, you can just take half. Let's say you're going to work with a cup of polenta, toast a half a cup, and then add it back in and continue to cook it the way you normally would. And again, it brings out that rich corn flavor Ooh. and, you know, just levels up your um, Good product once it's brought together. All right, so I'm toasting over here. Now another tip, Sass, to make the cooking process go quicker. Now I've got the vegan chicken broth here. Do you remember from last week when I showed the vegan beef broth? Uh, this is the vegan chicken broth already made up with the water. And so here's your tip, gang. We're going to heat that broth up just as if we were making uh, the, uh, what am I trying to say? The rice. Um, yes. Like boiling. Rice. Boiling rice. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when we're making, when we're using the Italian arborio rice, you toast the rice and you keep the broth hot and you ladle the hot broth in as you're bringing the yeah. rice together. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the, the broth here. And again, I'm using the vegan chicken broth, but you could use chicken broth, you could use veggie stock, whatever you want. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that hot. And that way we can speed along the cooking process. All right, the kitchen is smelling good now, gang. We've got the toasting happening here. And I don't wanna take it too far, it's kind of opening up a little bit. You'll see it start to puff. The moisture inside will start to expand. And so you'll notice that the little seed is puffing up. Now, I'm gonna let that go just another minute, but keep an eye on it, gang, because it will burn really quickly. I've got our iced bath black beans. The Spanish quinoa that I'm doing is more like the Southwest long recipe that I provided. But I also gave you a quick one, didn't I, Sass? The shortcut to the Spanish rice is yeah. just to cook salsa right into the quinoa. Boom, you've got oh. Spanish quinoa. Okay. Right. So I gave you two options there, gang, as you saw on the post. There's the fast and easy, and that's just broth or water with your favorite chunky salsa and just cook the quinoa the way you normally would. And you've got yourself a very fast, easy, and nutritious mm. um, quinoa dish. All Wonderful. right, so I'm gonna turn the fire down. We're all thoroughly toasted here. Now we would rinse the quinoa either before or after. It toasts better if you rinse after. So I'm gonna skip that process right now just to save time. But when you rinse quinoa, it removes the saponins. And saponins kind of make grains and seeds and nuts taste a little bit bitter on the palate. Oh, so that, right. that's why they always say rinse quinoa. I never understood why they had to rinse it because it's so difficult to rinse because it's so small. Yes, so you want to use your fine mesh strainer. So you, you obviously can't use a colander for this. A colander yeah. is more for pasta and things of that yeah. nature. Yeah. But um, let's go ahead and get sauteing our onion and our garlic. Now, everybody, the markets are a little scarce right now. There's uh, not a lot of choice in some of the markets. So I wasn't able to find organic frozen corn kernels or the niblets. So we're going to leave that out today. But you would toast your frozen corn straight from the freezer. Okay. So you're just going to take your bag and maybe dump a half cup or a three quarter cup of the frozen kernels into your dry pan. You could use a little butter or a little oil if you wanted, but very, very little. And then you would just put a little bit of a char on the niblets 
and then put those aside as you get ready to prepare the rest of the dish, if that Ooh, makes sense. It does. Yummy, yummy, really good, bringing out the flavor. Now, please don't touch genetically modified corn. Yeah. And I do want to talk a little bit about genetic modification. Let's go ahead. I've got a little bit of the grapeseed oil in. Again, our arterial roto-rooter. Great antioxidants as well. And I'm going to put a little bit of white onion that I've diced here into the pan. Let me give you the screen. Our broth is heating. So that's going to make the cooking process go faster for us. And I'm just going to break up some garlic here. So I'm going to take off the end of the stove. Lamb with the side of the knife. And then just run the knife through. Now, again, chefs, we're holding the blade. We're controlling it with our pinky. We've got total control on the blade at all times. I'm going to give the pan a shake here with our onions because we don't want to put char on the onions. Now, if you want to slow the pan down, just put it off the fire for a minute. The onions will keep sauteing, but we don't have to have it directly on the fire when we're doing other things so that, oh, all of a sudden my onions are burned. So just take it off the fire for a minute while you break down your garlic. And I'm just going to do a real fine mince. Now, we want to wait a little bit, chefs, before we put the garlic into the onions because the garlic can burn really quickly. Now, here's another reason that we want to wait for a minute. When you cut up your alliums, and that's leeks, onions, garlic, shallots, any of those of the family. Sass, you and I talked about these the other day. Yeah. You want to let them sit out. So chefs, you noticed that I had the onions already chopped and they were just sitting on a plate before we even came on. Now I've got my garlic broken down here on the cutting board. Let me just, can you see that? Whoops. So I've got the garlic broken down now into a fine mince and I'm going to leave it sit out while we do some other stuff. And here's why. Exposing alliums to oxygen increases their phytonutrient power or the fight in the allium by as much as 50%. Some studies show as much as 70%. So actually chopping up your garlic, your onions and that beforehand, let it sit on the cutting board about 10 minutes. Okay. You're going to get even more of that cancer killing, disease fighting, immune boosting, allium compounds and uh, there's all kinds of things you've mentioned camphorol earlier what is that exactly camphorol is a very powerful phytonutrient it's a very powerful antioxidant and we know that once we learn to stabilize camphorol it will be used in place of chemotherapy so oh, yeah. very very powerful to kill just the cancer cells and enrich and give good health to our healthy cells and our immune Beautiful. system. Now you mentioned uh, before, okay, our broth is boiling, gang, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Now you mentioned SAS B6. Yeah. And if everyone saw the post that I put up, I shared my three-step protocol. That That's is it. the foundation for every wellness program that I do. Now, I shared with you earlier, Sass, about a fertility case that I just finished working on. Now, people will say, what? You're the medicine chef and you're working with pregnant mommies? I work with whatever health challenge you have because the bottom line is, no matter what you're struggling with, good, clean nutrition, sound, stable exercise programs, meditation, affirmation, visualization, body work, all of that, no matter what our goal is, helps us achieve that goal. So yes, I do work with infertility. I've got my cardiovascular disease reversal program that eight people have gone through now and completely shown that we can rebuild the human heart in four to five months. 500 and plus cases of late stage cancer, all reversed. So there's enough proof now, I think, that we know that good, clean food is what it's all about. 
All right, so we've got the garlic here, and we started talking about the B6. Now, B6 is a vitamin. Some of the other things we've talked about, like manganese, are essential minerals. Let me go ahead and put the onions back on a low fire. I'm going to go ahead and add the minced garlic, and we'll just soften that and bring up the aroma without putting color on these items. Now, the B6 controls the biomechanisms of the immune system. So that's the thing that actually makes the immune system work. Many things boost the immune system. Vitamin C boosts the immune system really well. And I use that as you saw in my three-step protocol. So we know that it's a lot of different tools and things that bring us to radiant health. However, the B vitamins and quinoa being really high in B6 calms the nervous system, encourages the immune system to do what it's supposed to do, and it also strengthens our resiliency to trauma. So very, very important. I have a lot of clients that ask me, how come at your age you can still grow your hair down to your butt? Well, a lot of people, as they age, they lose that ability to grow their hair long, grow their nails long, you know, strong, healthy teeth. It's all connected to how we've taken care of ourselves or how we are taking care of ourselves now. So the B vitamins are very, very important. And our vegans want to make sure that they're doing these seeds, whole grains, leafy greens, things of this nature to make sure that they are getting their adequate B vitamins. All right, so I'm sauteing onions and garlic and I'm just getting them soft here, soft and aromatic. Now, uh, when we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and add in our seed. Well, good morning. We've got chefs joining us. Good, good, good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add back in our quinoa now. And let's go ahead and saute that around and get some of the flavor of the alliums imparted. And then we can start adding in our broth that we've already heated. Now, I found something, as I said, the market was a little uh, sparse on our ingredients, chefs. And so that's no problem for us. We know how to overcome difficulty. Chefs are some of the kings and queens of putting out fires. So we figure out at the last minute on our feet how to make things work. And I know that you can do that in your home as well. So there weren't a lot of fresh tomatoes that looked good to me. So I, I don't want to pick something substandard. So I found a can of organic diced tomatoes with the mild Anaheim chilies already blended in. So we've got some mild chili here. It's a very famous old American company. Look at the name, gang. I know you'll recognize this from their world famous cheese queso dip, Rotel. Now down here, you can see that they've joined the fight against genetic modification, so non-GMO, and no BPA used in the can. So go Rotel. I thought that was just spectacular. Now, I want the juice as well. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of flavor in here with my tomatoes, my mild green chilies, and I also want to go ahead and add in my spice mix. So what I do, chefs, before I get started, is I measure out whatever spices, herbs, all the things that we're gonna use, add a little s &P in here too, and I mix it all up, and that way I don't have to measure out each individual herb and spice while I'm trying to get dinner on the table. I do that, so, I do the same thing. <laughs> good, 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 yeah, any step that we can you know, speed up the process and make efficiency while still getting the great flavor and the great end result. We wanna do that. That's uh, how a professional chef thinks. We wanna be efficient, we wanna be quick. 
All right, so I've got all of our oregano, coriander, cumin, and all of these things in here have benefit as well, Mother Nature's antibiotics, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that in. And again, I've not added the broth yet. I'm gonna bring up all the flavors and let's review from last week that um, we want to make the most of each ingredient. We wanna bring each ingredient to its full potential. And that way, when we marry the flavors and the completed dish comes to the plate, everything shines. No flavors are muddy or um, really pushed down. We wanna elevate and lift up all of those flavors. All right, so I've got tomatoes, I've got mild chilies, I've got toasted quinoa. I've got sauteed onions and garlic. Oh boy, it really is smelling great in here. All right, now I've ice bathed our beans. Here's the black beans and you remember the ice bath technique if we're gonna use canned. So these guys are already ice bathed and they're nice and firm. We're gonna fold those in at the last minute because we don't want the beans to mush into the quinoa. If you remember last week with our black bean juice pulp burgers, we treated the beans first and then we gently folded in the juice pulp and that way we weren't muddying up all the flavors and the appearance was much more like ground beef because some of the beans were whole or kind of slightly pushed and mushed and some of the beans were creamy. All right, so I'm about done here with the sauteing and the blooming of our herbs and spices. So now I'm gonna begin to add our hot broth. Now for me, chefs, I don't like mushy things. So a lot of times when I'm cooking rice, um, barley, farro, any of those great grains and working with our quinoa here, which is a seed, I'll reduce the liquid a little bit. I like things to have more of a texture. I don't like things being really sticky and mushy on my plate. So a little bit of reduction of the liquid, you'll find that you get a fluffier product. And don't be afraid if there is some liquid left over, you, you can put the completed cooked quinoa in a colander and just shake it and just drain off a little bit of the extra. That was exactly the question I was going to ask because I always have water left over and, it, and it's a little bit soggy. Yes, and so we don't want that at all. We want a nice fluffy grain or a nice fluffy seed. And so just putting that in your fine mesh strainer and then just shaking it out a little bit. And another thing that I don't think we do enough of sass is letting food rest before yeah. we consume it. And I know we're hungry and I know it smells great. We want to get going and all of that good stuff. However, letting food rest for, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes before we consume it really brings the full flavor again and creates a beautiful texture. Mm -hmm. Now, Sarah Moulton, Sarah Moulton is one of my favorite chefs and people say we look like sisters as she's just crazy in the kitchen like I am, Sarah started out as Julia Child sous chef. So Sarah is a brilliant chef, very well trained, of course. And Sarah doesn't like to measure water when she cooks her grains. She just puts the grain in the pot, puts a bunch of water or broth in the pot, boils the rice like you would pasta, and then just drains the whole thing. The rice oh, comes out okay. perfect. So you really, yeah, you really don't have to worry about getting the ratio, but I'll tell you a quick tip. If you have a cup of rice and let's say, I'm going to show you on a plate because you won't be able to see in the pan. So let's say that this is a pan, just a saucepan. We've put a cup of rice down in the bottom of the dry pan. Now I'm going to put my finger right down in the pan you're going to fill the water up to the knuckle that is above the grain. So you, you dig your finger down into the rice. And so you've got maybe, maybe the rice comes up to the top knuckle. Yeah. You're going to fill the water up to the next yeah. knuckle. 
Oh. It's going to be perfect every time. So that's the, that's a technique. I'll have so to try that. that. A great technique to do is just use your finger. And so the cup of rice is down in there. Dig your finger down into the mm -hmm. rice and hold your finger up straight and then fill the liquid up to the next knuckle visible. Excellent. Excellent it works advice. every time. All <laughs> right. So however you want to do it, don't be afraid to shake off the extra water. There's no sin in that. That, that is just okay. fine enough to do it all the time. All right. So we've got our quinoa going. We've got our hot broth in. I'm going to go ahead and cover the pan now. And we're just going to let it cook. And I'm going to fold the black beans in later. Al, we did have a question, Sass, about why I'm always using black beans. Well, if you look at black beans when you rinse them, especially if you're cooking from dry, you'll find they're not black at all. They're purple. And so what that shows us is that the anthocyanocytes, blah, 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 I know, anthocyanins or anthocyanocytes are present in the purples, the deep reds, uh, like beets are a good example. Anthocyanins go in and they strengthen the vascular system throughout the body, not just inside the heart, but throughout the body. Now, what happens when we age is our vascular system naturally begins to thin. And we've talked about this before. So we can guzzle a gallon of water a day and still be dehydrated. Well, how in the heck can that happen? Well, right. well for one thing... The vascular system is not strong enough and flexible enough to hold the water in. So it will dissipate through the vascular system into the bloodstream and therefore it becomes ineffective. Okay. If we do our good fats, like our avocado or our nuts and seeds, whatever we may be doing to get our good fats in, that helps keep the arteries and vascular system, the veins, flexible. The anthocyanins or the purple and red foods strengthen and thicken the actual walls of the arteries and veins. And so this keeps us very youthful even as we begin into our advanced years. Amazing. That was a big challenge with my dad. My dad had congestive heart failure. He had a pacemaker. He'd already had the vein removed from his leg to rebuild the heart. And so keeping him hydrated was really a challenge. And that was why. Because any water he drank just seeped out of those weak, thin, inflexible veins out into the bloodstream. And so it was a challenge. So we want to keep those vein uh, walls yep. thick and flexible. So black, be black beans is not the same as uh, red beans. Huh? Oh, red is great. And zucchini, okay. any of those yeah. deep colors, that's all anthocyanin okay. or uh, anthocyanin. So, right. Great question, Sass. Yes, the red beans are fabulous. All right, okay. so let's just see if I've got a lid here for the quinoa. Let's cover that up. Just going to use this little plate here. Whoops, what's happening? Oops, okay, it's not big enough. I have to get a bigger plate. Let me just grab a plate for the top of okay. the pan here. Anything will do. I'm just going to set that there while we cook it. All right, so the quinoa is cooking and the water is absorbing, and we're going to go ahead and kick up the fire just a little bit on that. Now, let's talk about some other technique here. But the first thing I wanted to go back to what you were saying is quinoa is one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. So much so that NASA has found that it is a crop that we can grow in space. Oh, wow. <laughs> so quinoa is so interesting in its nutrient profile that even our space program is looking at it as a futuristic crop to feed the world. And even if we have to go to the space station and start growing things in space, quinoa is the number one crop that they've found that they'll be able to do that with. Amazing. Amazing. I just thought that was so yeah. crazy. So yes, out back to the techniques. We've got our toasting that we've talked about and we can toast the whole recipe, or we can toast half if we don't want that much toasty flavor. We also have learned to use our finger to measure the water 
and the grain going up to the top knuckle. Now, another technique that we can use with the quinoa is to infuse the broth with other flavors. Now, Sass, you prepared the asparagus with the quinoa out of delicious medicine the other day, right? I don't know if you can. Okay, because it keeps losing connection, and I, I, I miss what you're saying. Maybe it's, maybe it's my connection. Maybe your connection is fine. Can you repeat what you said? You prepared the asparagus quinoa the other day out of delicious medicine. Can you hear me? All right, well, let me go ahead. So in the book, Delicious Medicine, The Healing Power of Food, that's my book, and you can get it on Amazon. Um, I talk about another technique of infusing the broth that you're going to use, or if you just have plain water, this is even better, with other vegetables and flavors. So using the ends of asparagus that are kind of fibery and they're not edible is a great way to impart flavor in the broth and ultimately in the seed or grain that you're cooking. So I wanted to share that because that is one of the most popular recipes. I get a lot of requests for it. And so even crunching up some garlic or roasting garlic and throwing that into your broth really creates another deep level of flavor. And that's something that I think is different with home chefs than with professional chefs is that we're always looking at how to build yet another layer of flavor. All right, let's go ahead and check on our quinoa and see how we're doing here. Looking good, the liquid is absorbing. And we're just looking for that little tail to open up and come out. And then as we get further along, I can kick up the heat just a little more and speed it along. So as the liquid starts to come away and the seed starts to fluff up a little bit and you'll see that it is getting thicker. Now, let me just bring it over here. And you can see that the quinoa has started to absorb the liquid more now. We're gonna go ahead and fold in our beans. Now, what else would be great here? Well, if you're doing a Southwest, you certainly could use the red adzuki that you brought up, and we also could use pinto beans. That would be lovely. If we had our grilled or our charred corn, this is the time, chefs, that we would go ahead and fold that in. I want to wrap up with talking about genetic modification for just a moment. Now, I'm, I'm not going to use all these beans. I'll save those for something else. And again, chefs, we're just going to fold that in gently so that we're not mushing the beans up at all. Okay, going really fast because we heated our broth first. So really cutting down cooking time by almost half. All right, genetic modification. Let's go in, ahead and end on this note, chefs. Our GMO, we don't want it. I don't care what the companies say about it. Oh, it helps us feed the world. It prevents damage to the crops. Here's what it really does. It makes the food so that your body and your intestines don't know what it is. It causes great confusion in the digestive tract. Here's the latest on genetic modification. What GMO does is it has its pesticides built into the actual food. There is no washing it off. It's actually in the food. Now we see a huge, uh, you know, almost epidemic proportions of colon cancer in people 40 years of age. That is really young to be showing up with colon cancer. Colon cancer used to be something that we didn't really see in people until they hit their late 60s, early 70s. Now there's a rash of 40 year olds showing up with colon cancer. Here's what I believe. Actually, here's what I know. It's not what I believe. The genetic modification, the genetic organisms go into the intestines and they don't leave. And there's plenty of proof on this. They actually live and reside and implant themselves in the intestines. Hi, Pam. Good morning, gorgeous. Now, the um, 
what what it happened what happens is they become little pumps of pesticide yes you heard me the gmos go in they implant themselves in our intestines and then they are constantly throughout our life pumping out these toxic pesticides how could we not end up with colon cancer so here's my thing corn has to be organic zucchinis are some of the most genetically modified vegetables on the planet organic zucchini if you cannot do all organic and i understand that i've got a budget too uh, we definitely want to do our research and find out what is highly genetically modified and what is not soy is one of the most genetically modified crops as is corn we need to you know, stomp on the government and ask them to stop doing this to our food. Monsanto, you have got to stop what you're doing, okay? And I will not okay. shut up about this. Keep going, girl. You tell them. So that is why we're seeing such a resurgence or such a, a, a surge, I should say, not a resurgence, but a surge, an epidemic of young people having colon cancer because a lot of these younger generations are being raised up on what? Cereal. And cereal is one of the most highly genetically modified foods there is. So please try to feed your children organic breakfast grains, yeah. please. Because well, that will prevent, cereal. yep, that will prevent in the long run a lot of this damage. Yeah. All right, so no GMOs for us. All right, so let me check what's going on here with the quinoa and see that our, yes, we've got little tails showing. And boy, does it smell great. Now, I've got a little liquid here. The tomato juice, you know, was a little bit um, more than the broth. So we want to just cook that down a little bit more. And then if the liquid doesn't absorb all the way sass, we know that we can go ahead and put that in our fine mesh strainer drain out any of the um, excess liquid that we don't want. So let me go ahead and grab my strainer real quick. It's under here somewhere. Well, what did I do with that? Okay. Well, I can't find it. That's all right. We know what a fine mesh strainer looks like. So what I'm going to do is just tap out the grain, but let's go ahead and take a look with a slotted spoon at what the finished product looks like. Oh yeah, most of the liquid is absorbed here. And I can just tap this out and let's go ahead and put it on our plate so everyone can see how lovely the finished product is. Nice and fluffy. Oh boy, this smells great too. Now I can top this with some cilantro leaves, some sliced green onions, diced avocado. And this is a main dish that is going to give you B vitamins, stop the sugar cravings, all the amino acids, lignans to balance hormones. You've got your black beans to protect your heart health and your hormone receptors. Cooked tomatoes, 300% of bioavailable lycopene. What's not to love? This would make a great taco filling. So I hope you've enjoyed your time in the ageless. Oh, Ezekiel. Yes, uh, non-GMOs on Ezekiel. The only thing we want to be careful with with Ezekiel bread is there's sprouted grains in there. So never put Ezekiel bread in the refrigerator. As a matter of fact, no bread should ever go in the refrigerator because of the potential for molding. So bread either is on your counter or it's in your freezer. It is never in your refrigerator. I hope that helps. I love Ezekiel bread, high protein, high lignans, lots and lots of fiber, and it is fabulous toasted. So avocado toast, all that good stuff. So yes, non-GMO is what we're looking for. Well, good morning, all the lady chefs <laughs> with us this morning. How wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so take a look at the finished quinoa here. Is that something, and now we'd have our grilled corn in normally, 
and most of the liquid, as you can see, is absorbed. So this would be a fabulous, as I said, a taco filling. You could make a casserole with it. All right, now, as you can see here, chefs, the moisture is absorbed. Here's another spoonful of the quinoa, and it's just as fluffy and beautiful and delicious as it can be. That's our self-care Saturday. That's our time together in the Ageless yeah. Kitchen. Have a yeah. great week. Focus you on too. the positive. Thank and I'm going to say, here's to your health. Bye. See you on Wednesday. Bye, everyone. Have an amazing day, Tina. Bye. Thank you for joining. Oh, wow. I always learn so much from these from these um, tutorials, these live tutorials. Um, I didn't have the ingredients, so I didn't actually join in today, but I always learn so much. So um, if you guys have questions, even after uh, the live, oh, thanks, Pam, love you too. Um, don't hesitate to, um, to post it in the comments. You can put hashtag replay so that we know you're watching it on the replay and then Tina will get back to you, of course. All right, ladies, you have an amazing day. Oh, that looks delicious. That's Merline. You see now, it does look delicious and it's so healthy. Have an amazing day. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of music and we'll see you on uh, Wednesday for the yoga. Don't forget, we'll be back Wednesday for some good um, mindset movement yoga and uh, with Tina Martini and myself. Have an amazing day. Take care. Martini time. See ya. <laughs>